These days, it seems that everything I knew to be true as a child is wrong. Pluto is not a planet. Pterodactyls are now called pterodons. And the candied yams that I ate every single Thanksgiving were not actually made with yams at all, but sweet potatoes. It's true. <laughs> I have one more thing to add to your list. Oh, no. No, it's good news. OK. Sweet potatoes don't have to be just a side dish. They can actually make a really nice start to a meal as a soup. I love this idea. Yeah, we're going to make a silky, luxurious soup. And it turned out that simpler is better. So I have four tablespoons of unsalted butter melting in the pot here. And I'm adding one shallot that I sliced up nice and thin. And I have four sprigs of fresh thyme. And we'll let those go for five to seven minutes. We want them to cook until the shallot is softened but not browned. And you know, we tried making this soup with a typical mirepoix with carrot, onion, and celery, which is a really classic way to start a soup. It made the soup taste too vegetal. We want this to be really focused on the sweet potato. So we have two pounds. I'm just going to work on the last one here. And that's not a yam. That's not a yam. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to throw these peels away. I'm actually going to save them. You have a funny look on your face. I'm thinking compost? <laughs> no, no, not for compost. I'm going to save them. They have a really nice earthy flavor. That's because they contain a compound called methoxypyrazine. It tastes nice and earthy, and we're just going to use a little bit to give our soup a nice earthy taste. It's really potent. It's been detected in water levels as low as one part per trillion. So we're just going to use a quarter of the peels in our soup so we don't overwhelm it with that earthy taste. So it's very potent, and it has a really long name. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Let's cut the sweet potato in half here. What Becky's doing here is so smart. She cut the sweet potato in half and put them flat side down on the cutting board. It's a much more stable cutting surface so she doesn't miss the sweet potato and hit her finger instead. So the shallots are ready. I have four and a quarter cups of water. No broth, no chicken stock. We want to keep those flavors nice and clean. Four and a quarter cups going into the pot. And we'll let that come up to a simmer. Okay. So the water's up to a simmer. I'm going to turn off the heat, which I know sounds a little strange for making a soup. Yes. This is the key to having sweet potatoes with sweeter flavor and silkier texture. So we're adding the potatoes to the water. And just about a quarter of those peels with that nice earthy flavor. So we'll let this steep like this off the heat for 20 minutes. It's like a sweet potato tea. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so the potatoes have been standing for 20 minutes, getting a little bit soft. And now we'll add a little bit of flavoring. Still really simple. Uh, first, I'm adding a tablespoon of brown sugar. That'll just bring out the natural sweetness in the sweet potatoes. I like that it's not too much. Sweet potatoes already have so much sweetness. You know, this could taste like a candy if you added a lot more. That's right. We just want to enhance it. We don't want to overwhelm it with sweetness. Here is a half a teaspoon of cider vinegar. That'll just balance out that sweetness. One and a half teaspoons of salt. And a quarter teaspoon of pepper. So I'm going to turn the heat on now, and we'll bring that up to a simmer. While that's happening, I have a little treat in mind for you. I like this. <laughs> It involves bacon. I like it even more. OK. <laughs> We're going to make a candied bacon garnish for the soup. I love you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I have four slices of bacon, if you want to turn the heat on for sure. me. Sure. We're going to cook this over medium heat. All right. Four slices of bacon. We'll let all the fat render out. Now, what are you going to eat later on? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have the soup plain. <laughs> Let that bacon go until it's nice and crispy. It'll take five to seven minutes. That sounds great. I'll keep an eye on it. OK. So the potatoes have come up to a simmer. I'm going to turn that heat down to medium low, put the cover on, and we'll let these cook until the potatoes are nice and soft. That'll take about 10 minutes. OK, sounds great. And in the meantime, this bacon still has a couple of minutes left. Our bacon is done. Nice and crispy, smells great. It even sounds good. <laughs> yes, it does. OK, and I'll pour off the fat that's left. We don't need that. Now we'll put this back on the heat. We have low heat. Now we'll put the bacon back into the skillet. And this is how we make it into candied bacon. A couple of teaspoons of brown sugar and a half teaspoon of cider vinegar. And we'll just cook this just for a minute or two until the bacon gets nice and coated with the sugar and the vinegar. That's candied bacon. That's candied bacon. Bacon, sugar, vinegar. Do it. <laughs> Do it. You need to make this. Instead of truffles for Christmas, will you just make me candied bacon? I will. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> so it's been 10 minutes. The kitchen is filled with the most amazing fragrances. It smells so good. Potatoes are nice and soft. I'm just going to fish out those thyme sprigs. And now we just need to puree the soup. 
With the peels. With the peels. They're going to get all blended up in there. It won't discolor the soup because we only added a quarter of them. It'll add that really nice earthy flavor. That's great. So a couple tips about pureeing hot soup. You don't want to fill the blender all the way up to the top or you and I are going to have to take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you're holding the lid down, the steam can cause the lid to explode yes. right off the top. So Vesuvius. <laughs> That's right. So I'm only going to fill it halfway up. Okay, that looks pretty good. We'll get this nice and creamy. I'm going to blend this for 45 to 60 seconds until it's nice and smooth. Okay, let's see how that looks. Looks good. Let's pour it into a clean pot here. Oh, silky. Now I'll do the rest of the soup in batches until it's all nice and smooth. Here's the last batch. If you just want to turn the heat on for me, Bridget. It seems like it's pretty hot, but I just want to make sure it's piping hot. I'm going to give it a quick taste, see if it needs any more salt and pepper. Ooh, that is so good. I think it's perfect. So it's nice and hot. Let's give it a try. That is beautiful. Nice and silky smooth. So right? smooth. Now here's your candied bacon. Yes. I also have maple sour cream. Oh, I love that. So I'm going to go for the sour cream. And I have some chives. Great. The recipe for our maple sour cream is available on our website, americastestkitchen.com. I'm going in. Go for it, Bridget. <laughs> Mm. What's great? It's sweet potato, so it does have that inherent sweetness, but mm -hmm. it's not candy soup. You know, it doesn't taste like the side dishes with all the brown sugar and the marshmallows on top. This right. is definitely more sophisticated. And the texture is so silky and luxurious. I love that smooth, creamy texture. Mm, 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 mm. It would be such a great way to start Thanksgiving dinner. It would be. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Get sweet potatoes off the side dish, mm -hmm. put them front and center. That's right. Well, the beauty of the silkiest sweet potato soup is that the flavor is skin deep. Start by soaking sliced sweet potatoes along with some of their peels to create an ultra smooth texture. Simmer the potatoes with sugar and vinegar for balanced flavor, puree, and don't forget to make that candied bacon garnish. So there you have it. From our test kitchen to your kitchen, the best, most silky, deeply flavored sweet potato soup you'll ever eat. And you can get this recipe and all the recipes from this season, along with our tastings, testings, and selected episodes on our website, americastestkitchen.com. Thanks so much, Becky. You're welcome. You can come over for Thanksgiving anytime. Ooh, I'll be there. <laughs> Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.